Okay, so today um, we'll be covering uh, how to configure a basic uh, service. So the idea here is um, with the new V2 experience, which is going to be the de facto experience for all our new customers, um, it's extremely important that you know, you know how to configure this and what to expect, right? So I'll, I'll take you through the Kubernetes flow. It, it'll work for all the swim lanes. It's, all, it's very, very consistent. So what you can do is um, I'll configure one called Rohan Kubernetes app, right? And now you'll be taken into the configuration screen here. And in the configuration screen, you'll actually pick like a deployment type. And uh, what you'll notice from the V1 experience is that, you know, that was all defined in the pipeline. We've moved all that configuration that you defined in pipe in line in the pipeline back into the service because users like to manage this together in one, as one object versus dynamically in a pipeline. Um, so <coughs> you'll configure Kubernetes deployment type, you'll add a manifest. Um, we offer the same flavors today. So I'll just do Kubernetes to get this going. And you can specify it from any location, um, any custom source, uh, GitHub, files, harness file store. We can fetch from anywhere. And you can configure a connector to fetch from Git. Uh, that's most of that's like the 90% use case in our product today. And uh, you know, you can specify a branch. Um, you can specify the file folder path. And uh, you just like that, uh, you've configured, you know, your manifests. We can also take in an artifact source. So you can add an artifact source. We can call it Docker Hub, for example. Um, and by the way, just, just so everyone knows, we support all these types, uh, GCR, ECR, Nexus 3, Artifact, ACR, Custom, and Google Artifact Registry. So I have a, an active uh, like Docker one, so I'll use that. So my artifact source name, I'll call that, you know, Dev Docker Hub, right? And the image path will be library nginx. Pro tip to check to make sure this is probably the first area where you want to check. Convert this into a fixed value and see if your delegate can find it. If it can't find it, that means we have a problem like you see here. So what I recommend is, you know, making sure the connector works. So I might do something like this actually, where I think this connector will work better. And you'll notice like we can fetch and you'll see here, this connector actually works and I can actually fetch the tags. So this is a great way to quickly tr check if the config works. And then once you've configured it, you can hit save. And just like that, you've configured um, an artifact source. You can actually uh, configure multiple so you can say like, uh, you know, you, if you have a dev one, you might have a QA one. So that might be on, on the same repo, QA artifact source, right? And then it might be, you know, library nginx. And that might be an input, right? And you can save. And just like that, now you have two artifact sources. So we brought back multiple artifact sources on the same service. You can configure a sidecar still. It'll still have that first class treatment. So you'll have art primary artifacts. Um, uh, you'll have multiple artifacts. You can have sidecars. All those capabilities are available to you with services V2. You'll also have service variables. Uh, that was a crucial feature that a lot of our users use in our first generation project product where you can say like, you know, the CPU or the memory of a service, for example, right? And you can save those and you can use these as an expression. And just to show you that expression, it'd be like less than plus service variables dot CPU. You can reference that in your values YAML. Thank you.